Yes, yeah, Steve Weiss from Paul Anacone back in our Tennis Channel studios in Santa Monica. Our next guest, who we talk to day one of the Australian Open every year, Australian Open Tournament Director, Tennis Australia CEO, Craig Tiley. Craig, thanks so much for joining us here on TC Live. We talked to you exactly one month ago, in fact. You said it was crazy, something you had never experienced before. What's the feeling like now as we're about to get underway? Well, I don't think that sentiment's changed, but because uh, a lot has happened even since we spoke last time. But uh, in, in an hour, we're going to open the gates. Uh, really excited about welcoming fans. The players are all ready to play. They've had uh, nine days since coming out of the quarantine program. We've played a lot of tennis this week with the ATP Cup and all the other matches. And, and we're now going to go into starting uh, in an hour, um, the Australian Open on 16 match courts in this beautiful precinct here in the city of Melbourne. And... Uh, and fans are lining up and queuing up outside, ready to come in. Craig, we talked a couple of months ago, and you told me at that point you had about 10 contingency plans, and with about 10 contingency plans with inside of that. After everything that's gone on so far, what are you down to now? Is it just about playing, or is there a lot more that could happen? Well, you know, we're living in a world where you wake up in the morning and there's a new level of anxiety because you don't know what to expect. But uh, but we've got we've got we we've lucky. We've got a magnificent team, um, you know, about 600 strong. We've employed another 10,000 seasonal workforce, and and together we're going to deliver this event. So whatever's thrown at us, we'll find a way to manage it. We do have plans in place to manage it. It'll mostly probably be around people contracting the virus, but. Um, but this is going to be a safe precinct, a safe place to play. I know it's the evening there and it's uh, early morning here. And uh, we, we know that the fans of Melbourne and Australia are pretty keen to get out and watch some live sport. This is the first time this has been done since the pandemic began, you know, be able to have normal crowds um, and, uh, and have, you know, players from around the world here uh, playing, playing the Grand Slam in two weeks. So we hope it's a showcase and a signal to the world that during this pandemic we can find a way to make this happen. Uh, it's, it's been so nice to see the people starting to get out to the tennis again, and we're so excited to get to watch some. Last week, you had a big curveball with that one positive test. What happened, and how did you handle that to try to get it, uh, get it mitigated as quickly as possible? Well, it's, you know, when you get a call Wednesday night uh, from the health office to let you know that, uh, it's like, oh, geez, no, what, what, else, what else is going to come? But... Um, but very quickly, we mobilized our team, put a plan in place. We tested over 500 players in, in the space for 24 hours, got the results back. Uh, everyone was negative. Uh, so then they were all cleared, considered casual contacts. We had a few close contacts with that hotel worker. So our, some of our staff, uh, quite a few, had actually had to go in quarantine for 14 days. Uh, so we still then had to change some of our workforce processes, which we did in the space of 24 hours. We didn't play tennis that day. We shut the site. And then we were back on Thursday, up and running, and we made a plan to finish those events still. Um, so we were, you know, we've been we've been fortunate with good weather. It's normally very hot in in uh, February, but it's been a bit cooler. So the weather's really helped us. Always a pleasure to chat with Craig Tiley, Tennis Australia CEO, the tournament director of the Australian Open. Sometimes uh, hasn't slept for 54 hours at a time to make this happen. Uh, Craig, with what happened this past week, what are the protocols moving forward for the tournament, for the players, for the staff, for all the fans? Has any of that changed because of that one COVID case? It hasn't. It hasn't, Steve. We've, we've uh, you know, it's going to be a safe site. There's, there's a health scan when every fan comes in. Uh, there's three zones that they can go to and get entertained, watch some great tennis, enjoy premium hospitality, et cetera, have a good party. Um, and we just, fans will, will, will naturally physically distance. They do that well here in Australia. There's no requirement to wear masks. It's, uh, we're free of, we're free of, a community, um, of community transmission. Um, we, there is a requirement when you're indoors, though, to wear masks just to be extra safe. Uh, but outside of that, there's no requirement to do it, and, and it's going to feel very normal for a lot of people. But it's going to be a safe place to be because of our contact tracing system, our monitoring of everyone's health. And, uh, you know, we hope we can have up to 30,000 fans a day, so we hope over the course of the two weeks we can get to 400,000 fans, uh, which will be half of what we normally get, but that in itself will be an accomplishment in, in, the, in the course of this pandemic. 
Uh, it's going to be great to see all the fans out there. And, and hearing most of the players on social media, it's been really positive. Um, their feedback's been really positive, appreciative of everything the government's done. What, what have you noticed from the players in general? Have you gotten one or two kind of streamlined areas that you've had to focus on, or has it been kind of sparse and all over the place? Well, it's pretty much Paul all over the place because each player has a different need. We've got all the players in the world here, and they, you know, and to bring in uh, over you know a thousand people, that's the thousand players, entourage, and their whole team. You know, into two weeks of quarantine, we brought them on 17 charter flights from over 130 countries around the world. So it hasn't been an easy task to do that, but. But I think at the beginning, they had to get used to the quarantine program. Once they did, everything settled down. And most of the players have been fantastic. There's always the one or two that are standouts, but you're always going to get that in the group. But they've all been brilliant and uh, responded really well to the testing we had on Thursday. Uh, did that with no problem. We went from the accommodation to the testing site, got it done, then went back and isolated so they got their test result. They all followed the protocols. And, uh, and they've all been great, and they're all here ready to play. They're pretty anxious to play. They've been extremely appreciative and positive. I think nearly every player, especially those that I know well, have come into our office and, and congratulated us and said thank you and showing great appreciation. They're paying for, playing for over $86 million in prize money, and they haven't done that for a long time. So, so I think they're just appreciative of the opportunity. Well, Craig, uh, we appreciate all of your efforts, all of your team's efforts to make this happen and wish you the best of luck for a safe Australian Open and hopefully a, a little bit of sleep for yourself as yeah, well. Let the games <laughs> begin and let you get some rest. No, thank you. Let the, get, everyone get on Tennis Channel. Watch some great tennis, live tennis for the next two weeks. It's going to be fantastic. Some great matchups, great stories. Don't know where it's going to end up, but we'll have a great champions.